In 1842, the remains of a canine were found in a Brazilian cave by the famous paleontologist Peter Wilhelm Lund. The creature was a small canine, less than a meter long, and belonged to a genus of dogs known as Speothus, that were carnivorous and would have had a varied diet ranging from fish to land creatures. Lund was also the discoverer of the giant saber-toothed cat Smilodon, and he assumed this canine would have roamed South America at the same time as Smilodon, and then gone extinct around the same time. However, one year later, these dogs were found in Brazil, where they live to this day, and they are known as bush dogs. So how was the first record of these creatures from fossils when they had been living all this time? Thousands of Cambrian fossils can be found in the Canadian Rockies dating back to 510 million years ago in a formation known as Burgess Shale. Most famous among them is the Anomalocaris that was quite possibly the world's first predator. However, their family, Anomalocaridae, actually occupied a few different niches from filter feeders to small predators. They were arthropods, but not closely related to any living group. They were their own distinct family and were thought to have gone extinct at the end of the Cambrian, being lost to history as some of the world's oldest animals. But the fossil of a creature called Shinderhands is dated to around 400 million years ago. This creature having many anomalocarid features, and some recent studies have offered good evidence that it was likely a member of the family. This fossil shows that these animals existed for much longer than once thought, into the early Devonian, a very different time period that had modern fish, squid and the next range of arthropod predators, the sea scorpions. The disappearance of anomalocarids from the fossil record, only to return 100 million years later, is known as Lazarus Taxa. Lazarus Taxa is when an animal disappears either from the fossil record or a living animal known to science, giving the impression it has gone extinct, only to be rediscovered some time later with no evidence of the animal between its disappearance and rediscovery. Lazarus Taxa can be caused by a few different factors, and in the case of Anomalocaris, it exposes the limits of the fossil record. The thousands of fantastically well-preserved creatures found in the Burgess Shale are most likely due to the animals falling into brine pools. Pools of water that exist on the ocean floor that are far too salty for animals to swim through, that would stop the bodies from being scavenged by other creatures, but also the correct cocktail of chemicals may drastically reduce the rate of decomposition, increasing the chances of good preservation and offering a snapshot of an ancient world. These well-preserved habitats can be found all around the world from different time periods, and are known as Lagostarton. Some are produced under the same conditions that preserve the animals of the Burgess Shale, others from being buried under landslides, and some due to low oxygen environment slowing down the decomposition of corpses. These snapshots in time make it look like the sudden appearance of creatures, or their sudden extinction. Animals like Anomalocarids were most likely not a common sight past the Cambrian, and Shinderhands was most likely one of their last living members, and one of them just happened to fossilize. The reasons behind the disappearance and appearance of Shinderhands are due to it being known from fossils and the limitations that come from that. However, there are other animals that were known to humans when they were alive, declared extinct, and then discovered to still be alive many years later. When this happens, it is known as Lazarus species. In 1870, a large predatory lizard known as a skink was discovered in New Caledonia, off the coast of Australia. Skinks are usually not predatory, so this large half a meter individual was quite unique and named the terror skink. Past this date, it was not seen for over a hundred years, and so thought extinct, but in 2003, one was captured and filmed on a small island off the coast of New Caledonia called the Isle of Pines. The terror skink is probably extinct on New Caledonia, the Isle of Pines offered a sanctuary for a small population of them to survive. It was just a case of them being very rare, and living on an isolated island away from humans that kept them under the radar. The Brazilian bush dog was known from fossils, so it was presumed extinct, but then also was discovered to be living well into the present, and was just never known to science. This means the reasons are due to a combination of things that occur under both Lazarus taxa and Lazarus species. Although the range of the bush dog is large, almost all of it is confined within dense jungle, meaning they live in an environment offering lots of cover that is not heavily populated by humans, so they are a rare sighting, similar to the skink. 
but also dense jungle environments are very bad for preserving carcasses because there is a high diversity of animals that could eat the body, and jungles have a higher diversity of bacteria compared with most other ecosystems that can break down bodies of dead animals more quickly. This means that it was both very difficult to find the animal, and rare for their remains to survive very long either. There are other cases of creatures being known from their fossils before being found alive, where there are reasons that their fossils would be more easily found than the animals themselves. The pygmy mountain possum was known from fossils from the early Pleistocene, over 1 million years ago, until they were found at altitudes of over 1300 metres in the Australian Alps in 1966. Their mountainous habitats being environments not easily accessible or livable by humans, so remained unknown to science until relatively recently. The fossil of this creature was found in the Wombian Caves near Sydney that are nowhere near the altitude these animals are found at today. The reasons for this are unclear, but it is possible that these caves could have been at a higher altitude when the pygmy possum fossil was alive. Mountain possums occupy a very specific niche. Their main food source are a type of moth called the bagong moths, that migrate from surrounding areas up into higher altitudes in the spring. A recent drop in the population of these moths has seen a drop in the pygmy possums as well, showing that they are heavily reliant on them as a food source, and explains why they don't seem to do very well at lower altitudes. The moths could have once occupied the Wombium Caves where the fossil was found if the caves used to be at a higher altitude and so were able to support the possums, so their fossils were at a lower altitude and in a more accessible area to humans than the animals. This phenomena is also seen with deep sea creatures for the same reason. The very famous coelacanth that was known from Cretaceous fossils are still alive today, with little to no evidence of them for 70 million years between now and then. Coelacanth are by and large deep sea fish, that usually live at depths of a thousand meters and rarely come to the surface. However, the first fossil coelacanth was discovered in a part of Australia that was part of the ocean floor millions of years ago meaning that as is the same with the possum, coelacanth fossils were easier to discover than the living fish. Lazarus taxa then mystifies the non-human world, and is a reminder of how many animals and new species there are potentially to be discovered. Most interestingly of all though, is that there may be creatures known from fossils, and once thought to be prehistoric, still breathing in remote high altitude ecosystems or secluded island. And in the deep seas of the world, there could be Cambrian era animals, that may have survived unchanged for all this time. Thank you for watching. If you liked the video and would like to be updated of future content, then consider subscribing. A massive thank you goes to my patrons for supporting me, especially Greenfors and Fuzzleworth. If you would like to support me as well, then you can go to Patreon and make a pledge.